I could drill 100 holes without breaking a sweat. And a wood that you would never see a woodchuck chuck this week on Blue Collar Woodworking. If you're familiar with my neighborhood, you know two things. First, you know how to be creepy. I mean, you never see me stalking around your neighborhood, do you? The second thing you know is that there's this mill just down the street, and it's run by a couple of guys that are even creepier than you are. They're called the Bunyan Brothers. And they inherited this mill, I don't know, from their dad. And behind it, they have this workshop. They think it's the greatest thing in the world. And it is, it's full of great tools, like the new Yankee workshop, if it were run by a couple of morons. Because they really don't have a brain between the two of them. But yet, they think they're the greatest thing since sliced wood, and they're always trying to outdo us here at the Snuffy Nubs workshop. Anyway, the whole point of me telling you this is that they have a big pile of particle board over there this week. I don't know, they cut down a big particle board forest, I don't know where they got it. But, they're these hoity-toity, frou-frou woodworkers that think they're too good for particle board. Well, like any real woodworking master, there's nothing I hate more than arrogance. So it's time for me to show them I'm better than they are by challenging them to a build-off. We're going to take the whole pile of particle board, divide it in half, and I'm going to build something, and they're going to build something, and we'll see who's too good for particle board. Meanwhile, most of you know that my workshop away from the workshop is often lumberjocks.com. It's a great website, and one of the best parts are the project galleries. Here, woodworkers of all different skill levels can post their work for other people to critique or comment on whatever they want to do. Anyway, we've done some tense negotiations with Lumberjocks management, pulled a few strings, greased a few palms, and put together a new regular segment for our show. This pine chest with carved butternut panels was made by Richard Zureb. He said he made it to try his hand at carving. Well, if this is just one of his first tries, I think we'll be anxiously awaiting his future work. I love green and green furniture, so these clocks immediately caught my eye. God of Biscuits made them from some beautiful ribbon mahogany using the plans he found in Wood Magazine. From the ebony accents to the craftsman style, they would look great on anyone's mantle. It's true, we all like to work with nothing but the fancy woods like 2x10s and plywood, but I think one particular type of wood gets an undeservedly bad reputation. You don't need to be afraid of particle board. It's not going to hurt you unless you drop it on your foot because that stuff is pretty heavy. Now I know you're thinking, particle board, isn't that the stuff that comes in that cheap Walmart furniture that I buy for my kids and it lasts like 10 seconds before it collapses into a pile of sawdust and Kool-Aid stains? Well, it doesn't have to be that way. Used properly, particle board can be a good option for a budget conscious project that you're going to make to give away to somebody you don't like much anyway. You think you're too good for particle board? Well, I'm not too good for anything. And to prove it, I'm going to eat this old mustard packet that's been sitting under my bench while you watch something useful. The ancient woodworkers in Rome had a saying, E pluribus planum. Roughly translated, that means you can never have enough hand planes, and the Greeks stink. Now, I don't necessarily agree with the Roman view of the Greeks, but I wholeheartedly support their attitude about planes. You can never have enough. I have about 100 planes here in the Stumpy Nubs workshop, and I don't use them all, but I plan on getting at least a hundred more before I die someday and have them all buried with me. But I didn't always feel that way. When I first started using hand planes, I found them frustrating and frankly, I got tired of them mocking me. So I took the time to sit down and to carefully learn how to use them one at a time. And along the way, I developed my five rules to ending your hand plane frustrations. Number one, never buy the cheapest or the most expensive planes. Really cheap planes aren't flat enough, the casting is not smooth enough, the blades won't get sharp enough, they'll never work right. 
really expensive planes on the other hand are just nuts. I can think of a lot better ways to spend $800. Number two, master one before buying another. If you're frustrated with your number four, buying a number five won't help. You'll just end up with a shop full of decorations. Take the time to learn how to properly use a block plane, then a smoother, then a jack plane, and so on. Number three, tune it like a sports car. Learn how to lap the sole, clean up the bed, and flatten the frog. The parts of a plane must fit together perfectly. Removing rust or casting flaws in critical places can make all the difference. Number four, stay sharp. A thousand dollar plane won't work if the blade's not sharp. That means a proper bevel angle, a polished back, and a mirror edge. Sandpaper alone won't do it. You need stones or polishing compounds with microscopic grits. Number five, sharpen it again. Many hand plane related problems come down to it not being sharp enough. If you're having trouble getting wispy thin shavings, go back and hone the edge some more. You might even consider upgrading the blade to a better quality steel. Many inexpensive blades simply won't hold an edge sharp enough no matter how hard you try. Follow these five simple steps and you'll turn all those expensive door stops into great tools. You're welcome. So my big pile of particle board is here. I have 32 boards. They're all about a foot wide and about eight feet long. Must have been some big trees because the Bunyan Brothers have the exact same amount. Now using particle board is an art. The Mona Lisa wasn't painted in a day. So I'm going to have to take a little time on this project. It'll probably go a few weeks and I'll have to really think about the design. So while I do that, you watch this. One of the tools I use most in the shop is an inexpensive one that frankly I didn't think was even going to work when I bought it. It's this combination square that I got at one of the big box stores. I don't remember what the brand is because it doesn't say it on it. But I bought it because it was cheap and I was intrigued by the way it worked. It uses a couple of rare earth magnets to attach the blade to the body rather than the traditional uh, turning clamping mechanism. That means that you can very quickly adjust it side to side or just take the ruler off to use for something else. And for an inexpensive tool, it stays really accurate. Now I'm not saying it's the greatest combination square in the world, but I really like it, especially because of its ease and speed of use. And it's really worth picking up if you can find one at your local box stores. Now if you have an inexpensive tool that you picked up new or used, maybe even something you've had a long time, but you really like it, send us an email to stumpynubs at runbox.com. And maybe you can say, nana na boo boo, I'm not a hoity-toity tool frou-frou. I sent Randy over to the mill on a clandestine mission to try to figure out what the Bunyan Brothers were building with their particle board. It's already been a couple hours, so I'm just going to go ahead and assume he's been captured and maybe killed, and I'm going to move on to plan B, which is to try to design something myself without cheating. What I'm thinking is I may do something for my own personal office. Particle board would be perfect for built-ins because particle board projects usually fall apart when you try to move them. So something that's made to stay put forever, like built-in shelves, that's a perfect project for particle board. So I'm gonna get started on that design. I'll sketch something up in SketchUp and I'll be back with it while you watch this useful segment. I've built a lot of bookcases over the years, and one thing I've realized is that people like adjustability. Sometime down the road, you're going to want to change the way the shelves are oriented, and if you've made them permanent, well, you're going to have problems. So save yourself a lot of cussing and swearing in the future, and just make them adjustable to begin with. Shelf pins are the easiest option to make shelves adjustable. They come in several different styles, and they're pretty inexpensive. But to properly install them, you've got to have some type of jig. And if you're like me, besides the whole tall, dark, and handsome thing, you'd like to build that jig on your own. I like the idea of using a plunge rudder to drill the holes because it's just faster. You can get a hole about one every second, and they're always going to be straight up and down. And I find that there's less tear out than with a drill bit. Now, if you're going to make one of these jigs, it's pretty easy to just whip one out. Uh, the length of my row of holes is about 18 inches. That keeps it about the right size to be able to fit in standard cabinets of like 24 inches. 
and I like to have my holes spaced about two inches from the fence. Otherwise, inch apart spacing on the holes. I drilled half inch holes for the uh, router uh, collar and you can make it out of a couple scraps. I'm amazed at how different my twin nieces are. Megan is so much more confident and outgoing than her sister, Hogface. All right, I used SketchUp to design my new built-ins that I'm gonna put in the office, and I'm pretty excited about it. I spent some time with the new mini shelf pin dig, and I liked it. But it suffers from the same limitations that all the commercial versions I've seen suffer from. And that is that it's a little slow if you've got a lot of holes to drill. It only does one side at a time. You gotta flip it around to the other side of the board. And every time you move it, whether it's to flip it around or to work it down a long board, you have to clamp it down on both sides with clamps. And I hate fiddling with clamps like that. I think I can come up with something better. So I designed a new one. Check it out. Since fiddling with clamps is such a pain in the rear, I wanted to come up with a solution that eliminated that factor. This bench mounted system can be made from scrap materials like any good jig can. It's designed to reduce the amount of times you have to reposition by drilling both rolls of holes in a single setup. And it replaces the clamps with a simple cranking mechanism, dramatically increasing the efficiency for long stock. The template on the top has separate rows of holes so that it's easy to position them for different widths of stock without having to drill new holes or put on a new template. And by adding a couple of riser blocks underneath the template, you can increase the thickness from the three quarter inch to inch and a half or whatever you want. So for your easy quick projects, you can make the mini template jig as I already showed you how to do. Or for some serious pinhole drilling, you can go with the big template jig. And I think I'm going to use them both a lot here in the workshop. Just go to stumpynubs.com and click on the tab that says Stumpy Store. There you'll find plans for a lot of the projects we do right here on the show. And the prices are pretty cheap. Well, it's been another long day. Randy's mission was a failure, just like he is. He went over there and he said, what you building? Then he spent two hours helping him make it. And he still doesn't know what they're making. I know, it doesn't pay to cheat. But the stakes couldn't be higher around here. And that's what the loser has to buy for the winner. So things could get pretty expensive. But I'm confident that I can pull it off. Because I have a secret weapon. I have no shame. I'm not too good for particle board. I'm no hoity-toity frou-frou woodworker. I know the fine furniture guys would make fun of me, but I'm not saying you should use particle board in ultra high end stuff. I'm just a regular guy with a regular workshop who's just like you. I use the stuff that's on hand. I've got a giant pile of particle board and I'm determined to make something nice out of it. And to all those guys that make the fine furniture, hey, if you can make a high boy out of particle board, you've got more talent than most. Then you can just sit back have a cold one because <laughs> you've earned it my friend <laughs>